Well, for many, the Super Bowl's big draws are the halftime show and, of course, the adverts, aren't they? One quarter of the event's airtime was commercials, so almost half an hour in total of them. And as Christine Romans now reports, the battle for airtime is fierce, but not everyone is convinced that it's a sound investment. So they're coming. It could be the most expensive 30 seconds in sports, and maybe in all of business. It's go time. It's a Super Bowl ads sold out for weeks, some hitting a record four and a half million dollars a pop this year for just 30 seconds of TV time. But the number of eyeballs, that's what's priceless to advertisers. More than 100 million viewers have tuned in for each of the past four years. Compare that to 40 million for the Oscars, 28 million for the Grammys, about 15 million for last year's World Series. The Super Bowl is one of the very few television shows where you still get a lot of reach. Um, you get people from all different walks of life and with all different preferences watching it. But are millions of viewers worth millions of dollars for just a few precious seconds? Market research firm Communicus finds recently only one in five Super Bowl ads actually motivates consumers to buy anything. Nobody but, me. but sales aren't the only goal for advertisers. It's uh, also kind of a great sort of badge to have. You know, we were in the Super Bowl last year. That's how big our brand is. And a lot of advertising is about self-congratulation as well. 43 advertisers bought ads this year, ranging from the standard 30-second spot to two minutes. Some of the big spenders include Anheuser-Busch, Butterfinger, Doritos, GoDaddy, Jaguar, Dannon, Wonderful Pistachios, and General Motors jumping back in the game after a brief hiatus in 2013. Smooth. The big trend this year, teaser ads. Don't you think it'd be nice to try something new? They help companies build hype. Surprise. And give fans a heads up on what to watch for. Much of it driven through social media, which brings more buzz and gives advertisers a lot more than one little spot on TV. Don't you think it's time we all get our own places? Super Bowl advertising becoming a game of its own. Star players, millions of dollars on the line, and an audience who likes to play favorites. Christine Romans, CNN, New York. Well, Will Francis joins me now to take a look at the social media side of these adverts. He's the co-founder and director of Hockable, a London-based ad agency that helps brands develop their online presence through, of course, the world of social media. Great to have you on the show. Um, well, so the Super Bowl, really. Is it about the ads? Is it about the games? Um, the ads are taking an increasing uh, amount of the focus now. You know, brands are putting so much money into entertaining people during these 30 and 60 second spots to sell their wares. And, you know, there's re research out there that says people are increasingly tuning in for the ads over the game. Yeah, and, and is it a sound investment, though? Because some of these ads, you know, they've got A-list celebrities, storylines that were clearly thought out months and months in advance. It's, it's a big investment. It, it is. It's huge. And I think, you know, part of the return on that investment is the fact that, you know, the Super Bowl is no longer just an American thing. It's like, you know, outside of America, where people don't necessarily care so much about American football, these ads are now reaching people through social media. Yeah, they're entertaining of their own right. And in mm. fact, I've just clipped a few of them from YouTube yeah. here. That's the really interesting thing about the Super Bowl ads, is that they actually go on social media before they actually go on television, and people immediately look for the ones they like. Yeah, and there's even teasers. So there's even trailers for the ads that are going to be shown on Super Bowl night, which is sort of crazy, really, when you think about it. But, um, yeah, and these ads garner tens of millions of views on YouTube and get shared across Facebook and Twitter. OK, let's have a look at some of your favourites. Um, my personal favourite was predictably the Budweiser advert with the tiny little puppy and the great big horse. That was a big favourite, wasn't it? That's the biggest. That's uh, currently about 36 million views on YouTube. It's by far the, the most successful one online. Yeah, perhaps I'm predictable. I like cute <laughs> things here. Um, we also had Arnold Schwarzenegger in uh, some very skimpy shorts playing ping pong. Also the, the Muppets in a Toyota advert. What was so special about some of those? Uh, there were a lot of celebrities in this year's ads, you know, and it's always a winner. I mean, the celebrities and puppies definitely dominated this year's Super Bowl ads. It, which ones have got most traction online, would you say? I mean, I know it's only a few hours after the actual event, but you must have had a chance to gauge the success. Yeah, like I say, uh, Budweiser kind of running away with it, really, with, uh, with puppy love. Um, you know, the shows are love between a, a horse and a, a puppy. It's very cute. Um, Joracell did a really beautiful ad where... 
they showed the first um, ever deaf player to play at the Super Bowl um, and how he's been powered by technology and managed to realise his dream and that's had about 17 million views. Um, so, you know, there's some very emotive, serious ads as well as the sort of cute... And, of course, cars, beer. These are yes. the kinds of things that traditionally dominate the Super Bowl, aren't they? Another type of drinks maker is also in the headlines, and that is Soda Stream, isn't yeah. it? For rather mm. controversial reasons, right? It is. I mean, some would say it's self-engineered uh, controversy. I mean, last year they had a, uh, an ad that they had to edit Coke and Pepsi mentions out of. So they, they, they knew that that wasn't allowed, but they created this ad with Scarlett Johansson this year that calls out Coke and Pepsi, probably knowing that that would be not allowed, banned, and then they could have a sort of an uncensored version online and create some buzz around that. But... And she's had her own troubles because she had to end her relationship with the charity Oxfam because yeah. SodaStream is based in occupied territories over there and uh, the Palestinian Authority and Oxfam had a problem with that. Mm. Celebrity endorsement is so much part of the Super Bowl, isn't it, Will? It is. I mean, people do things that they wouldn't normally do for Super Bowl ads. I mean, Bob Dylan did an ad for Chrysler, that's very unusual to see him in an ad. And that actually didn't go down so well. Um, and but... neither did the Scarlett Johansson thing. So this no. can be a sort of, yeah. sort of Damocles, can't it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, uh, nothing's guaranteed and that, that, inclu that, that includes celebrity endorsements. So maybe they should have stuck with a puppy. You know? <laughs> there you go, animals. Always good. Mind you, they're not as easy to cast because they won't necessarily do what you told them to. True. Will Francis, thanks so much for thanks. joining us there, the co-founder and director of Harkable, running us through some of those key ads if you missed them last night for the Super Bowl. Well, if you want a closer look,